It was actually a weekend full of actions and a weekend of uh, bitter and sweet, in a way, for Nigerian sports lovers uh, as our uh, 20 guys and girls couldn't really fly her idea in their various competitions. And uh, on that note, I will be welcoming you to the show this morning, 360 Sports, with me, Emmanuel Fashime. Uh, I will not be doing it alone, but before then, you saw a video where Plato United and Abia Warriors actually were, were doing what they know how to do in the Nigerian Premier uh, Football League. Unfortunately, both teams didn't qualify for the Super 6 that is going on right now in Lagos at the Mobology John C. Arena right there in Lagos where the six teams, the likes of Rivers United, unbeaten Bendel Insurance, Lobby Stars, Sunshine Stars, Remo Stars, Eva are doing battle to see who wins the crown for the 2022-2023 league season of the MPFL. Let's see who wins it and uh, it's day two. But before we go to that story, uh, we have to take uh, this first story on athletics where Essay Brumen wins at a World Athletics Continental Tour. She is brimming with fire. She started the season brilliantly. And to tell you the truth, these lads are ready for Budapest this year where the World Championship uh, will be coming up. And I have Isaac Omidiji all the way from Niger State joining me on the show 360 this morning. Isaac, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Okay, straight to our first story uh, this morning, uh, where Essay Brume actually did very well uh, over the weekend, winning at the um, Atlantis Continental Tour to actually show her readiness for Budapest. This is a lady who actually won a medal at the Olympics, and now she's not resting on her ORs. I think uh, uh, if you say by this, uh, by this feat this time around, how well prepared is she for Budapest? But um, look at this uh, record this time around, Isaac. Well, I think this is very, very prepared. Uh, she's one of those athletes that are giving their best to you know, training and preparations for the Liga stage. I remember she started from the first uh, Grand Prix. And early this year, where she got 6.7 6.7 meters yeah. jump. Went to France, got 6.88, and that was just barely three days before we get to this feet. Yeah. 6.81. So you, you can see the improvement. You can see the improvement. You can see that she has been beating even the best in the game. So she's well prepared for Budapest, and I will not be surprised if she will still be either the first or the second Budapest. Because I don't see her going outside the podium. She definitely does the podium. I don't forget that Faith Zoro. Zoro did very, very well, massively well. So I think these lads are encouraged. They have good managers, they have good agents, they have good coaches. And for themselves, they also have good mindsets. Yeah. And good that they are, you know, trying to maximize all opportunities, all avenues to compete with the best for getting to the best. Okay, uh, if you look at it, not just uh, for, you mentioned Faith Usoro, we also have uh, the likes of uh, um, uh, Toby Amuson. We have our own male, let's not forget our male, uh, Okwevo, Natanya, and, and the rest of them. Now, if you put all of our athletes together this time around, and with your achievement at the just uh, concluded NCCA, you see what Faith of Philly, they qualified in the 200 meters and the rest. Now, put all of these together, uh, in Budapest, do we actually stand it? Because uh, if, if we want to go by what our athletes are doing right now, we should be coming back like, uh, let's say, at most, eight gold medals. Yes, I will be disappointed if we don't get that, because these lads have done so very well in preparation games, preparation championship, and for them not to you know, compete well in Budapest, we had you know, put so many question marks on what they've done so far this year. So, for them to consolidate on what they've done, good preparation championship, good records, personal and even national and even African best, they must, they must do well in Budapest. And I don't want to put much pressure on these lads, but let, just, let them go out there, compete with another set of bests, you know, they've been competing with the best in this championship, but you know what is at stake at Budapest. You see the best of the best. So let's then try, let them try out their luck, uh, their strength, and their skills. And I believe that even if they don't get the podium, they will definitely, definitely be on the podium. 
Definitely be on the podium. Congratulations to S.A. Brume and every Nigeria athlete out there that is doing us proud. The likes of Chukwebuka Inekwechi and the rest of them who has also qualified. Right now we have almost about 30 Nigerians, uh, if not if 11, that has qualified for the uh, World Championship that will be happening in Budapest. And congratulations to every one of them. We are just looking forward to their great performers come uh, in a few more time when they will land in Budapest, there, right there in the World Championship. Uh, let's move away from that story and come back home and look at the MPFS Super 6. They say it is made for the champions. Match day one has come and gone over the weekend. We had some, okay, let me say mixed results for some, good results for some. And for Rivers United, they are not just resting on their oars. They actually want to defend their title. They've been dubbed the Manchester City of Nigerian football. Can they actually do that? Can they defend their title? You know, when it comes to Nigerian Premier League, it's not easy for you to win it and defend it. So maybe Rivers United want to prove Ocrit is wrong. And say, okay, we can do it. We are the big boys. That is the result on the screen. Match day one. Anybody played the first match that went down was around 2 p.m. They played 2-2 two -two with Rebel Stars. Rebel Stars came behind twice to actually get a draw in that match. All uh, praises was going to Junior Lokosa, a man who has traveled far and wide and came back home to also continue in the Nigerian Premier Football League. And then Rivers United, Pips on Stars, courtesy of a Bubeduru spot kick. In that game, one day it ended and the unbeatable Bengal Insurance, almighty Bengal Insurance, Bini Asnas, as they are called, goalless with lobby stars. These guys are not just resting. They are still in the FA Cup. <laughs> big one, big one, big one. Isaac, look at the result. What was your surprise? Well, I think I'm not no surprised at all because uh, you have scored that early club in the bottom three points. Over Remonstrance. But if you look at what Remo has done, this, you know, they're not a team to write off at all. And that also shows you the way they came back twice to get in trouble. Remember the last uh, one, the last goal they scored was at the nine minutes of that particular game. Yes, of course. The worry is better insurance. Now, why am I worried about that better insurance? They have not been beating this season. They have just been beaten, right? Yes, of course. So most of the games, they are drawn. So, I mean, a championship like Super 6, you don't need to draw matches. You need to win matches to top the group. Remember, only one champion will match. Of course. If you continue to, if you continue to draw your spirit, then you will not <laughs> get anything from Super 6. I remember what's our stake. 100 million naira for the winner. So, I think it's um, tipping Eda and Imba. It is clearly Eda and Imba or Rivers will to get this particular uh, Super 6. Remember the last time Super 6 was played, Eva clinched it. But Rivers United are uh, also not ready on the house. And they're trying to do everything possible to ensure that they get uh, the trophy again. But games are still continuing today, continuing on Wednesday. So, so many games still on, on the cards to play for this lads. Let's see how it goes. But for a better insurance, they must change their attitude, their mentality from drawing games. Because in a championship like Super 6, drawing games will not be going. Okay, drawing games with offer for you. Okay, let me take you straight. You've already mentioned it. Day two actions will be happening today. Let's have uh, the fixtures on the screen where uh, we, we have the two matches that will be coming up. We'll have Lobby Stars against Eniba. Eniba that played draw with Rebel Stars. Then Rivers United that beat up, uh, uh, that beat up. Uh, uh, their counterpart uh, Sunshine Stars 1 0 against uh, Rebel Stars, and then Bengal Insurance will be playing Sunshine Stars. Let me say they are the whipping boys <laughs> on, the, on the standings because they have no point at all. Now, look at the fixtures. Which of the fixtures are you looking forward to? Rebel United Rebel Stars. Yes, I'm looking forward to that particular game because Rebel Stars play a brand of football that is very unique. And this is Rivers United that won their first game. They want to consolidate and get additional three points. But you know, the more points you get, the more the chances of you winning Super 6. So it won't be anybody to the top game to look out for. But I would rather go for Rivers United and Boston because Raymond, on any day, the impresses me so much because of their gallantry, their skills, their organization, and the way they play. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that particular game. Now, it will be anybody with 2 p.m. Uh, Rivers, insurance and stranger stars will go for the last game of the day. So 6 p.m. That, that goes, but I'm looking forward to Rivers, United, Rebel Stars. 
I think they are somehow maybe favoring uh, a, a Bendel insurance with the time because their second game now they will play it <laughs> the last game of the day by 6 p.m. The other day they moved their game to 7 p.m. And you know, when it's night game, it's always favorable. The weather is also uh, always cool, except maybe when uh, rain is falling. But as it stands right now, I think Bendel insurance is actually enjoying uh, the weather right there. But they've gotten uh, their first game was a goalless draw. Let's see what happens in today's game. I'm just looking forward to all the three games. Uh, I think the Super 6 this time around, well organized, better organization, better officiating. And let's just maybe one or two mistakes from the referees. But at the end of the day, I think we've had uh, good games. I, I, I saw all the three games. It was a good one. Good one. Congratulations to IMC for putting up this uh, organization. Let it continue to the end. All the matches, the first match will be coming up by 2 p.m. Followed, uh, the second match will be by 4 p.m. and then the last match of the day will be by 6 p.m. That is Bendel Insurance and Social Stars. You can just go out there. Be sure to get it on your screen. They are showing it. I think IMC have a deal with one company. I don't want to do PR for them. If they want PR, they should come and pay. But at the end of the day, you are going to see all these matches on your screen. Let's move away from that story and head straight to Argentina, where our own I will call them Almighty Flying goes because. It was the better team that actually lost that game to the Koreans. They flopped their lines. They had their chances. They couldn't take it. And they were punished by, by just that long ago. Isaac Obidigi, you never gave this team this chance to even get to the quarterfinal. <laughs> true, true. I never did. And to be sincere, I think uh, some of the displays so far uh, really proved some of my opinions wrong. Uh, I think the boys probably had what I said and said, said no, we could put this guy wrong. Uh, they were very uh, talent, they were resilient. However, you know, initially I also agreed that the best team lost yesterday. But again, I have it on a second thought. If you're actually the best team, you should have qualified. So I think the best team won. Remember, our major problem yesterday was that we couldn't convert our chances. We should have buried these Koreans even before the 19 minutes uh, full time. We should have buried that game and buried it successfully. Because in all the partners of the game, the programmes were better. Except being clinical in front of goal. And the only chance they remember they got just one shot on target. Yes, of course. On target. We had six shots, I think, yes, on target. Squaring goals. But we couldn't convert any. And Emmanuel didn't really do well in the striking position. You see, Emmanuel and Salim Fargo are good attackers. But they are not clinical finishers. They are not guys that can finish games. They are not those athletic strikers you look forward to. And that goes to show that even at this group, at this young stage, at this junior stage, we don't be able to solve the problem of ghost scoring. Why does only the problem of uh, you know goalkeeping? We don't solve the problem of ghost scoring because these are some of the players will be looking up to and they will qualify for the level three and probably for the survivors. So I think it's the they did very well. They made a statement by even eliminating all post Argentina. And the South Koreans realized that the flying rules were more stronger when it comes to base and PC. So they decided to sit back, defend, and eat the Eagles on the counter. That didn't work for them for the 90 minutes, but it eventually worked. And when it did, they were so disciplined in their defense line that all the firepower of the flying rules players they didn't bring them down. I, I actually I was so disappointed uh, in that game because uh, we had all the chances in the world. Uh, most recently, Manuel the culprit had a, a absolute a sitter where we would have buried that game. He missed his chances. Now, um, Isaac, let's look at this team in general. What's your opinion? Should this team be disbanded or they should be put together and probably graduate some of them into the Super Eagles? Disbanded, no. Let them continue to be, you know, probably once they were officially brought back to you know, the other matches. Let's see how even the national tournaments or their age grade can even be used to also develop it. You see, uh, Benjamin Fredericks, as well as Obuche, the center of defense, are future good central defenders for the Super Eagles if they continue to improve on their games. And you see, uh, the likes of uh, Eletu, Daga, uh, and you Sanke that we missed so much yesterday because of illness. Oh my God. All those guys are very, very good. But my problem now is, 
I hope after this tournament, we will not find the likes of Data, the likes of Benjamin Fredericks, the likes of Obu. <laughs> I don't think so. Going to Malta to play for a club. Going to Jamaica to play for a club where you will never see or hear about them again. And that's how they're telling to go. Go to a club where you can develop. Okay. So a similar. Yes, of course. So you, don't, you will not be surprised this season will be breaking into the first ten upper of the similar. So let these guys be well managed. Let their next moves be well known. Don't go to some mushroom countries that are not even better than Nigeria. Okay, don't go to some... <laughs> water, going to funny countries that don't have pedigree in football. football. Okay, uh, I think uh, the Flying Eagles player are actually, hear you, uh, actually hearing you right now, but I can tell you for free that some of them have been scouted by the big teams in Europe, uh, the likes of Fredericks, Daga that you mentioned, that is one fantastic player that I actually liked. I think we've seen a replacement for Wifren Nididi. If Wifren Nididi decide to hang his boot in the Super Eagles, Daga is in the corner waiting to just take over, and we have fantastic player. And Igbo so already has already gotten a deal in Ukraine where a Ukrainian team has signed him already, and I think on a four-year deal. And for other players, I think they have, uh, they, 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 they have the scouts on ground who actually want to snap these guys away. And I, I know one big team is actually gunning for Fredericks and, and the rest of them. So uh, congratulations to the Flying Eagles. They bow out gallantly, even though they lost to the Kore uh, to Koreans. They were the better side of uh, they were the better side on the night because uh, I actually wanted to see them in the sem semi-final. But so far, so good. They've done their best. I think they should be coming back home gallantly. We defeated the almighty Argentina, the host of the competition. But at the end of the day, we lost to Koreans. But, uh, well, that is football for you. You win some and you lost some. But for NFF, don't disband this team. Put them together. Graduate them into the Super Eagles. You are sure of winning Lawrence with a side. Let's move away from Argentina and come back home and come back to Africa where our own other 20 teams for the women right now also lost the final. It was a penalty shootout against the host Ghanaians. It ended 1-1 regulation time where Sebastian has to equalize for us at the dying moment of that game. We went straight to penalty shootout. I don't know what happened. We missed all our three spot kick and they were able to convert us and they have been crowned the champions Wafu B tournament under 24 women 2023. Isaac, this came as a shocker to me, Isaac. Yes, it also came as a shocker to me because if you remember the first game we played and they charged the in jail for like seven goals to nothing, I think we, we, we spoke on this same program and after that particular year too that that's nothing. As far as I'm concerned, we cannot be playing in jail as far as seven goals and we expect them to come out for the day. We want to play the in African football. I want to talk of big girls, talking of Ghana, South Africa, Cameroon, Morocco. These are the big girls. Even Ivory Coast, I also try to come up now. These are the big girls. I know we eventually got the opportunity to play the big girls. We fought her. We fought her. And all those goal scoring machines that we had in the team couldn't even, you know, succeed in getting so many goals that they have gotten previously. And now you say that when we test ourselves again, the better side just didn't come out well. But it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Uh, I hope they have flexed their lessons and I hope they will know that beating in Jay and other countries that don't have any prejudice yet in female football on the continent uh, shouldn't be something they should celebrate and forget that there is a bigger tax ahead. We should know that even on the continent, even the Super Cons, I don't know that the great, great Super Cons will be going to be Morocco, South Africa, Cameroon, Ghana, Ecuador, Gino, Zambia. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's not it's not a bad one. They came, they won the silver uh, medal right there. But at at the end of the day, they, uh, they've qualified for the uh, under twenty uh, Afcom for the women that will be coming up later this year. But uh, so far, so good. Wanted the gold, uh, but that is where it is. It is football. Anything can happen when it is football. And uh, quickly before we go, uh, let's go straight to Italy, where our own superhero, Superman, I call him Victor Simen has been uh, given uh, uh, has won the highest goal scorer award the first african to actually do this in syria uh, we have the likes of uh, Bafemi martins and the rest of them who played there can one call but for Vitor Simen, he has made the difference he is the king of goals 
in the Italian Serie A and is a massive, massive achievement for Vitor Simen. Isaac, this young man has done it again for himself and for Nigeria. He has proven to be very hungry for success and he has gotten success, especially with the club side, happily. And for the young man, I think he will see banging more goals. He will continue to bang in goals wherever he goes. But I think his best move is a big test and a big call. A big call. If you ask me personally, I would wish you would remain at Napoli, get a better deal, get input contracts, and stay at Napoli, continue to bank in the goals. Napoli might not even win the league next season, but hey, with what Victor has done in Italy, he needs to do it again. But if he needs to move, he should watch where he's going to, so that he will not end up not being a player that's always succeeded in the last year and gets to a bigger club. And they couldn't do it because to have played for Napoli is very a small club. Yes, of course. And then the likes of Diego Maradona, the club that has not won the Scudetto. So it's not a small club. And he contributed immensely, immensely to the success of uh, uh, Napoli this season. So kudos to Victor, he has proven to be a good getter. And if you remember his history where he, he came from, you know that yes, this guy has broken all records to be one of the best in the world. To be one of the best in the world. We we'll leave it there, Isaac. That is how far we can go on the show. Isaac, thanks for joining me on the show all the way from Niger State. Thank you very much, Manuel. All right, thanks for watching. I am Emmanuel Fashimi.